Welcome to Biomimicry Academy, where you learn from nature and design for people and planet. Now, obviously, with all these trends coming together, we see that tradition as such is not a business model. The values underlying certain traditions, they are important. But just because we have done things the way in the past, like we did them, is not a reason to continue doing them in the future. And many of those things that we have been doing in the 20th century will not lead us to success within this century. So the question then is, why with all that knowledge don't we act now? And the reason, the deep-rooted reason why we have difficulties moving towards the needed actions is that we were all raised and conditioned in an old system. We're basically stuck in a conveyor belt mindset coming from a conveyor belt like education. So when you look at education, even at large today, we're teaching young kids, the future generations who should be basically responsible innovators in a manner how we raised and educated kids 150 and 200 years ago. So how do we overcome these burdens? How do we move to the 21st century mindset and create tools and use tools that lead us into a prosperous future. And this is something that we call hybrid thinking. Hybrid thinking is the hybridization of different approaches that tackle exactly these challenges and start with the individual and with the direction we want to go. So it's value based and create systems and business ecosystems that are viable and that are responsible and value creating. So hybrid thinking consists of four aspects. The first is what we call the transformative purpose. It's a direction, it's a strategy. These are the values. This is the why of your organization or the why of your intentions. Why do you want to go that way? Where do you want to go? What are the values you hold? And what is the strategy to achieve these values? The second aspect of hybrid thinking is mindset innovation. How do we transform individuals from this 20th century mindset to the 21st century mindset? How do we acknowledge and use and leverage all this creative and cognitive potential within human beings and bring it to the best of humankind, but also to the best of our planetary system? The third aspect of hybrid thinking is agile collaboration. Even if we leverage and harvest the potential of an individual, how do we make people to work together to harvest this crowd intelligence, this group intelligence that creates so much creativity and so much emergent power to create new systems. And finally, the fourth aspect of hybrid thinking is future business. How do we create business ecosystems that work, that create value and that leverage abundance and are not based on scarcity and competition? So hybrid thinking serves as a guiding framework for responsible innovation. Now, how do we make this actionable? And this is what we call the elements of responsible innovation. The first aspect of it is the human aspect, the human-centered design. So what is the relevancy of why we're solving a problem? What is the need behind? What problem do we solve that is worth solving? And here we'll use various methods, including design thinking, looking at people's and humans' needs, abstracting what are their desires and their pain points and their needs, and bring them into the solution space. The second aspect looking at those solutions is where do we source these solutions and the ideas for potential solutions from? And this is where nature and biology comes into place. This is how we create sustainable systems using biomimicry and nature inspired innovation. Because nature and biological systems throughout the course of millions and billions of years has developed strategies that solve problems radically differently at times than we do it currently. The third aspect and the third element of responsible innovation is then systems thinking and circular economy. So how do we create entire systems that are interacting with each other and functioning as a whole and not just as an isolated part? And here we apply systems and closed loop thinking. So an important thing is not only an individual solution, but thinking in a larger context. And this leads us to the fourth element of responsible innovation, which is business modeling. Because even if you think through a system and you have a great idea, an invention is not an innovation. So you need to implement it into the market and understand the dynamics of economics. And this is what we'll teach you throughout the Biomimicry Practitioner 
online education to learn how to create revenue models, how to tap into abundance, how to leverage stakeholder and ecosystems to build something that works, that creates value and that creates a viable business. So towards the first part, the user-centered and human-centered approach, we have to learn how can we work in collaboration and co-create with people who will eventually take advantage or be immersed with the solutions we create. So here we use a variety of tools to not only tap the individual and not only go into what we call in the 20th century mindset, the IQ, where we measure the intelligence quotient and separated people by numbers even and put standardized protocols on people to compare them, but rather harvest the human potential by connecting people, by creating collaborative relationships and creating something that Peter Spiegel nicely calls the WeQ, the collective intelligence, the group intelligence, which is way more powerful and that requires exchange, that requires emotional intelligence, that requires empathy and learning about people's needs and using them as a leverage point to create something valuable. So here we will use design thinking and other user-centered design methods to leverage exactly these needs. Because real innovation doesn't start with technology only. It doesn't start with a business case. It always starts with a desire or with a pain point that is then made possible through novel technologies. And this solution then is, of course, being made viable in a business model. This element of responsible innovation is really about an entire new mindset, an entire new culture. It's highly collaborative. It is human-centered by definition. It's about rapid prototyping basing your solutions on assumptions and testing them. And this then implies quick iterations to improve and eventually build something that creates value. The second element of responsible innovation is to learn from nature, is bio-inspired innovation. Why should we learn from nature? Why is it so different and so powerful? Well, nature has been around for 3.8 billion years. This is a very long time and throughout this time, and by the way, we are part of that evolution, we are a product of this evolutionary process, nature has developed a plethora of different strategies and solutions that very often outsmart things that we can do technologically. And because 3.8 billion years is just such an astronomical number and we can hardly wrap our heads around, what I've done here is I've compressed the age of our planet, which is even older, it's 4.5 billion years, into one calendar year. And what we consider the pinnacle of evolution, the industrial revolution, from the steam engine to the artificial intelligence right now, this entire stretch is less than two seconds on that scale. And this is where we currently source all our innovation and ideas from. So the question is, and that is something that we want to leverage throughout these programs, is how can we leverage all that potential that lies before and beyond these two seconds and really learn from the design mechanisms and strategies that nature has developed and successfully developed because they're success proven throughout these billions of years of evolution. And exactly that is what we need in the 21st century. Going back to the graph that we've shown you earlier, we cannot use the same approaches that we have used and successfully used throughout the last decades and centuries. We have entered a decade and we've entered a millennium where we need entire novel approaches. And this 21st century has to deal with complexity, with uncertainty and with unpredictable futures. And this is where evolution, testing, trial and error and entire new approaches come into play. And this is where biomimicry fits in and creates outcomes that are value based, that are sustainable and that are regenerative. If you want to know more about biomimicry, visit www.biomimicryacademy.com and become a biomimicry practitioner.